Hey guys, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. Unfortunately, the bearer of bad news, one of the greats of technical analysis, Tony Tabell, just passed away this week. And if you don't know Tony, hopefully this quick video is going to give you a bit of a background into uh, this great of technical analysis. Uh, it comes from a lineage of great technical analysts. His father was a, as an accomplished uh, technician as well. And hopefully uh, continue to build on the legacy of, uh, of Tony's work uh, well after he, uh, he's departed the earth. Uh, Tony's work was profiled in Andrew Lowe's great book, The Heretics of Finance, and this profiled some of the great technical analysts who um, sort of practiced in the 1960s, 70s, 80s as technical analysis was transitioning from being really a pariah approach to becoming a little more mainstream. And now we find technical analysis and especially behavioral finance, which I would argue is so closely related, um, are, uh, are prolific on financial media and, uh, and in the markets. Uh, Tony is actually related to Richard Wyckoff, so my friends Bruce Frazier, uh, Roman Bogomazov, guys that uh, teach Wyckoff analytics. Tony Tabell is actually Richard Wyckoff's uh, great nephew. It was his great uncle. Was uh, was Richard Wyckoff? I actually didn't know that until I read it in uh, Andrew Lowe's book. Tony was one of the first presidents of the Market Technicians Association. He was the MTA president from uh, 1975 to 1976. This was just after the MTA was founded in 1973. I was president of the MTA from 2010 to 2014 and enjoyed learning about uh, more about the history of the organization. I remember reading a lot of Tony Tabell's work and about uh, his contributions uh, as I was uh, going through that process. Tony actually came up with the idea of the MTA annual conference. They held the first one in 1976 with a small gathering of, uh, of cell site technical analysts in the New York area that grew broader and broader to, uh, to the MTA annual symposium, or the CMT annual symposium, as we now call it, which has been going for a number of years. One of my favorite events to look forward to uh, every year. Tony won the MTA Annual Award in 2009. Uh, he's one of the few that actually uh, was a father-son uh, uh, recipients because his father had actually won it a number of years earlier, almost 30 years earlier in 1980, one of the first recipients of the MTA Annual Award. And this recognizes great contribution to the field of technical analysis. Now, what's really cool about Tony Tabell's work is uh, his letters and his father's letters are captured on a website, tabellmarketletter.com. I'll have a link to it below the, uh, the video here. And if you haven't checked it out, you should, uh, because it captures the writings of these two great technical analysts from 1944 to 1992. It's almost a 50 year run through an incredible period in market history. This is the recovery after World War II, the go-go years of the 1960s, the 1974 market low, the 1982 low, the 83 uh, breakout when the Dow broke above 1,000 and, and everything in between. So it's a great history lesson on really the staying power of technical analysis. I wanna share with you just a snippet of one of uh, Tony's notes from mid-1974. This is when the market's you know, eventually bottoming out. He wrote, it is possible to find some solace also in the developing patterns of individual stocks, and it is the area in which improving patterns are being seen, which is to us as technicians of interest. Every once in a while, the market will begin to show action with fl which flies in the face of generally accepted conventional wisdom. In early 1968, for example, the Vietnam War was at its height, with, ab which ab with absolutely no prospect of withdrawal in sight. Yet throughout the first quarter of that year, the technical action of quote-unquote peace stocks, those companies which would be beneficiaries of the end of the war and increased consumer spending, was consistently superior to that of companies presumably benefiting from the level of war activity. At the end of March, it will be recalled, President Johnson made his momentous decision not to run for re-election that fall and to seek a cessation of the Vietnam hostilities. The result was the famous April Fool's Day rally, which touched off what was ultimately to be a 170-point advance in the Dow, with the so-called peace stocks leading the way. It is perhaps worth noting that only the prospect of Vietnam peace was enough to set this rally off. Peace itself did not occur until four years later. Again in 1974, the stock market patterns that seem to be developing fly in the face of current conventional wisdom. We are assured on all sides that the outlook for consumer spending is bleak and that it is likely to turn down sharply in the second half of the year. Yet, a careful inspection of stock patterns suggests that among the better ones are those belonging to a whole group of companies that would benefit from increased consumer spending. So it's interesting that even though market structure is totally different now, decades later, and the participants very different, um, the, uh, the way we actually analyze stocks using computing power and screening and everything is, is much different than uh, in, in Tony, when Tony's writing this in 1974. The universality of human behavior and human psychology as a driver of stock prices uh, is consistent. And the fact that 
the market is moving not on the news and not on expectations. It's on how people expect those things to evolve, right? It's all about pricing in, uh, you know, consumers and investors and what they are expecting to see. And that is the, uh, the goal of the technical analyst. It was, as Tony was writing that in 1974, remains the goal of the technical analyst today. So I wanted to highlight a little bit of uh, Tony Tabell's contribution to the field of technical analysis from all the technical analysis community. Rest in peace, Tony.